Hello? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to The Rock. Would you stand and uh, sing with us? joy in this place. Yes. Car with Kansas license plates, your lights are on. So there is still joy even though your lights are on. There's joy that God sent something Nick in here to say, hey, your lights are on. So, And there's joy also because um, wasn't it a perfect timing that God opened up the heavens and poured out the rain just as you were coming in today? <laughs> awesome. 
awesome quenching gifts of God right here. Yeah, we're glad you're here with us today, whether in person or if you're joining us on the live stream uh, this morning or uh, throughout the week. We're glad you're here too. Uh, for those of you here today, don't forget the prayer cards and the information cards that you'll find in the little pocket in your row that you can fill out and make use of. You can put those in the basket as it's passed later on in our worship or if you have a specific prayer need that you'd like us to pray about today in worship, hold those up during the second song and I'll come around and and pick those up and, and do my best to include those in our prayers time uh, this morning. Also, for those of you on the live stream, you can make use of uh, these points of contact. If you have a need of information or a prayer, we'd love to uh, be of assistance to you in that way. Our item that we're still been collecting for the month of October for the Blue Valley Community Action Food Pantry is still rice. Uh, we have one more Sunday in uh, the month of October that we can uh, bring those items of uh, rice, whether it's a box or a bag or whatever, and put those in the bin, the plastic bin that's outside in the cafe area. And today we're going to continue on in our series uh, from the uh, author of the Red Letter Challenge called the Being Challenge today, and we're looking forward to that part of our worship as well. Uh, one thing that I also want to announce, I don't have a slide, is that if you um, are a college student, and it doesn't matter if you're uh, an undergrad student or a graduate student, uh, the uh, the, the kids from our Faith Inc. ministry, grades 5 through 8, have a gift for you today. And they'd love for you to come and pick one up. There's some just plain brown bags that are filled with all kinds of good things that we'd like to bless you with today. So there will be some of those students gathered around that table that uh, you can come over there after worship and grab one. Please grab one. I'll try to remind you at the end of worship as well. We'd love to bless you in that way today. So with that being said, are there any other things that I'm forgetting? Okay, let's stand and greet one another in the way we feel comfortable this morning. Okay, as you're making way, your way back to your spot this morning, our theme verse for today comes from the book of Job in Job 12, uh, verse 10. So I'd invite you to speak this with me today. It is God who directs the lives of his creatures. Everyone's life is in his power. And let's confess our faith in our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in these words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O oh, Holy Spirit, in these moments that we've gathered in this place around your words of life, speak to us into our lives collectively and personally so that we may not only hear these words, but these words would produce a God-centered action in us, both personally and collectively. We ask too today, Lord, that you would would put a barrier between those distractions and your word. Put a hedge around us, so to speak, a force field, if you will, so that the only thing that gets in today would be your word of life. This we pray in the strong and precious name of Jesus. 
and all God's people here today said, Amen. you to be alarmed by the smoke that sometimes comes out from up here. That's not smoke. It is a fog. Uh, just kind of adds to the 
the worship experience a little bit, you know, to uh, maybe give us a sense of that Holy Spirit of God, that Word of God speaking to us in this place and surrounding us and filling us as we're here today. Uh, so it's a good thing, so don't be uh, alarmed by that. I want to take us to Ephesians chapter 4 this morning, where it says, Therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Would you speak the rest of this with me? And do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. So is there any rage, anger, bitterness, malice? I don't see anybody brawling right now. Perhaps maybe there's been a way in which you mentally or emotionally have been brawling with someone. What ways have this past week, or maybe even today, that you've or I have allowed the devil to get a foothold in our lives? Well, from that passage, it encouraged us to get rid of that. Why? Because we belong to the Most High God, a God of mercy, a God of love, a God of compassion, who has called us to be his own in Jesus and called us to a different way of life that doesn't include those things. So I want to encourage you today in God's gift of prayer, just you personally with God, to confess those things now and await his word of forgiveness. Let's do that. Lord, in these moments, we've confessed to you the actions and the words and the thoughts that aren't reflected of of being a child of God. And we are sincerely sorry and ask for your forgiveness. So once again, in your mercy, point us to Jesus and the forgiveness that we so need and desire. It's in his strong and precious name we pray. Amen. That section of Ephesians ends with this verse. It says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. See, our forgiveness is motivated from the forgiveness that we receive from Jesus As a result of his life, death, and resurrection, the cross, and the empty tomb. Not only does God forgive us, but he empowers us to forgive one another. And and his love for us never ends. You know, yesterday I had the privilege of officiating at a marriage ceremony right here. And that's the one thing, the two things that that I pointed out to that couple is is that love and forgiveness are the, 
are the greatest gifts that God brings into that relationship. And God, God models the relationship that he has with us through, through marriage as an example of unconditional love. So know today that God loves you unconditionally in Jesus. And because of that, you are forgiven of all your sin, of all the times when your behavior, your thoughts, your words have not been a reflection of being a child of God. And today, you get a new start, a new start. Each day you do. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Now here we are. Here we are in uh, week three, and we're going to get to the second keystone habit of Jesus in our message today, but uh, I think it's helpful for us to remember where we've been and the why of, uh, of what we're, we're doing today, um, because what we have been doing is introducing uh, each week a keystone habit of of Jesus so that we can become greater followers of Jesus and who better to look at than Jesus himself we want to be in a relationship to God to see how Jesus did it he was the only one who was in perfect relationship to God so he's a good place for us to start a good model for us to look at and with his help we can incorporate some of these keystone habits in our life and keystone habits are are kind of uh, are, are like uh, any other habits uh, good or bad uh, that uh, intentionally spill over into other areas of our life so in other words what we wanted to have is these habits that that not only just affect and and influence and grow us closer to Jesus but also into all of our relationships it spill out over into everything that we are and do and think and say uh, just permeate our whole our whole being and so what we did last week is we introduced uh, the keystone oh by the way too uh, this is uh, this series uh, the tool that we're using for this series is uh, God's word along with this book by Zach Zender called the being challenge and we did the red letter challenge a couple years ago focusing on the the words that are recorded in scripture that Jesus spoke to us but now we're going to the first uh, one in those uh, uh, points of uh, uh, what Jesus uh, uh, talked about was was being, and we're aiming for that target of being with God in Jesus and showing and looking at Jesus to show us how to do that. So last week we talked that uh, said that Jesus was committed to community. He intentionally invested in different sizes of of community, and we talked about the influence of community uh, when it comes to the habits in our lives. And we started there because. Because um, you can have incredible goals, you can have even great habits in your life that are pointing you in a certain direction, and yet if your entire community and your system is pointing you in a different direction, well, it's not going to work very long in the long run, is it? Um. So uh, today, what we want to look at as we consider these uh, keystone habits of Jesus is uh, we want to look at uh, something more specific. Um, since we focused on the community around you, now today uh, we're going to be focusing on you, you and, and me specifically. What is your identity? And uh, in order to help us answer that question, uh, knowing who you are, influences the way in which you live. I mean, um, the word identity is uh, interesting because it comes from two different Latin words. Um, I don't know if you're interested in words like I am, but this is one that's particularly useful and helpful for us. Uh, the first word is ascentitas, which means being, and then the next one is identitim, which means repeated. And isn't that interesting? Because uh, uh, in other words, your identity is literally your repeated beingness, <laughs> right? And so uh, your identity is literally your, your habits, and it's, and it's woven together. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a both and. Okay, it's not one or the other. So uh, your habits shape your identity, and your identity shapes your habits. Let me say that again: your habits shape your identity, and your identity shapes your habits. Both they're 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 woven together, and there's so many ways that uh, people try to seek out their I identity. I mean, we hear that a lot today, don't we? I'm trying to figure out who I am trying to figure out uh, uh, maybe uh, what 
I'm supposed to be doing? What uh, direction that I'm going to go? And we look to all kinds of places for that. You know, a lot of people uh, have gone uh, over the course of the last uh, 10 to 20 years to places like Ancestry.com to find out about their, their ancestors and their lineage and to see where they come from and, and to find out who they are. Or you can go to, uh, what's another site that I, that I, that I found? Uh, 23 and me. Have anybody heard of that one? Yeah, uh, they're, they're wildly popular to dive into your, your, your family tree, to discover something that may help present you in the present so that you can be a little bit better you in, in the future. And there's all kinds of things. There's strength finders to help you find out what you're, what you're strong at, what your weaknesses are. Um, there's that thing called the Enneagram number. You can, some, maybe some of you know that number for uh, yourself. We have all kinds of personality tests and all kinds of that. And while all of that stuff is, is awesome and good and fascinating and, 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 and really helpful, um, the only place that you can truly discover, truly discover who you are, is to look to the one who shaped you, molded you, and created you. And that is God. And that is God. And his voice speaks most clearly to us in his words of the Bible. Another word that we use to describe the Bible is, that we call the Bible, is the scriptures. And so um, I'm going to invite uh, Tim up at this, um, at this time to uh, uh, bring us um, a message to our children that can help us uh, kickstart and dive into this next keystone habit of Jesus in determining our identity and how our habits shape our identity and our identity shape our habits. So um, let's invite the kids to come on up. I'm a lot scarier than Stacy is. You can still come up. He is such a nice man. He's very gentle. Come on up. All right, this morning, to just get us warmed up, I just said that we'd practice our ABCs. Do you guys know your ABCs? Okay, so I'm going to sing the ABC song, and then uh, then you can sing it with me later. Ready? So, ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, X, Y, Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? All right, you got it? You're looking at me funny. Did I mess that up? Is there something wrong with that? What I miss? Let me try this again. A B C D E F G H I J K X Y Z. What I miss? L M N O P Q R S T U V W. I missed all that, but you guys picked up on that right away. Although you weren't talking to me, <laughs> your voices, you, you looked at me like I was crazy, which is pretty much true. But what that shows is you guys know your ABCs. You've got it down pat. And when someone sings the ABCs wrong, like I did, you know it right away. And that's the where we want to get with the Bible, is that we know God's word so well that when someone says something funny, we go, hmm, that's not right, and it doesn't bother us as much. Uh, up on the screen is the theme verse for today, and I just want to review part of it with you today. Can you say this with me? Everyone's life is in his power. Can you see that? Everyone's life is in his power. That means that God says everyone's life, your life, my life, everyone's life here is in his power. So if someone tells you, gosh, there's big thunder, I'm really afraid, we need to be afraid, you can say, well, I know everyone's life is in his power, so I don't need to be afraid. 
or when bad things happen or you're worried or scared, you just remember everything is in God's power, and you know that. So let's try to rem remember that one again. So you say, everyone's life is in his power. You say that? Okay, so you got that down, Pat. Now, what I want to challenge you to do is the way you get all those words and all those stories into your head so they pop up whenever you want to, just like the ABCs, is you practice. And so my challenge to you today is to ask your parents or so someone, brothers or sisters, over to read a Bible story to you a day. Or if you're old enough, read your own Bible story, one a day, and try that for the next 40 days while we're doing this challenge here and see how that makes you feel to have read a story every day. So when you get back, say, I need one story a day. Remember that? Everyone's life is in his power. I need one story a day. That's your two things for a day. The other thing to remember is when you trick-or-treat in a couple days, I want you to remember this. The Bible says God's word is sweeter than honey. And so when you get all those, those toys and, and uh, candy, say, this is good, but God's word is sweeter. All right? All right, you can head back. For you parents out there, the, uh, I will hold up. These are the three books we read to our kids. Uh, they're by a publishing company called Golden Honey. Uh, there's the First Step Bible and then a Beginner's Bible, and they just keep stepping up and getting a little more detailed, a little more detailed. I would hold those up to you to, uh, again, read those to your kids as often as you can. Again, we, we wore the covers off of this, and there's lots of blessings that come from that. Thanks for sharing that with us, Tim. You know, um, I, I know that uh, during the course of the, the day or even at the end of the day, uh, if it's during the week and um, your child comes up to you and says, uh, read me, ask to read a story, maybe that's your practice at bedtime or, or, or something like that. Or, uh, and, and sometimes there's that part of us sometimes that says, Oh, no, I don't know if I want to do that. Because we have our own list that's going on in our head, right? Just remember that those kids are God's gift to you. And that reading them that story from his word is so worth it. And that God will supply the time that you need to do all that other stuff. And that God has given you a blessing in, in, in choosing you to be the ones to connect his little ones to himself by sharing who he is and how he feels about them. You know, even did that with Jesus. God's own son. You know, in the, in the, uh, in the red letter uh, uh, challenge, um, there was, there's about uh, 1,800 verses that uh, are attributed to uh, Jesus speaking those words. And uh, about 180 of those are him quoting Scripture. So that's, I mean, that's pretty easy math, right? 10%. 10% of the things uh, that uh, Jesus says are him quoting s Scripture. What, if, what would our lives be like if 10% of the things that came out of our mouths were pieces of God's Word? You know, just kind of chew on that for a little bit, you know, and, and, and strive for that with the help of God's Holy Spirit. So um, studying Scripture is where we, we find our identity, you know, and, and, and to do that, I want to go to a, a time in, in Jesus' life where, where um, things were kind of confusing for Jesus' followers, and maybe that's where we find ourselves today as well, too. Um, you know, uh, Jesus has been, been uh, crucified, and to their knowledge, he is dead, that he's not coming back. And they're trying to figure out this thing. They're all, they're upset, they're mourning the loss of their friend, their teacher, their, 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 their mentor. And uh, they're in this room, we could say quarantined, <laughs> because they're fearful for their lives. They think that they may be next. And then all of a sudden, Jesus, I mean, can you just picture this? Jesus, uh, you're, you're, you're 
with this group of people, this community, and you're in fear, you're trembling, you're wondering what's going to happen next, you're so confused, you don't know what to do next, uh, you're wondering who you are, and all of a sudden, Jesus bursts through the walls. I mean, the wall doesn't fall down, there's no hole in the wall, Jesus kind of just appears through the wall. I mean, sometimes I wonder, like, what, like if Jesus would just walk through that wall right there, or maybe he prefers that, I don't know. But wow, he bursts through the wall, and, and then he starts to talk with them. He, start, he, he, he says this. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. So he, he, he says, hey, hey, I'm, I want you to go back to everything that you've learned that God has spoken to you through these scriptures. I, I, I told you these things even when I was with you that they had to happen and, and they had to be fulfilled. And, and, and Jesus says, hey, I'm the one that fulfilled them all. And then, But look what Jesus does as he goes on. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. One of the very last things that Jesus does before he ascends to his Father in heaven is opens their mind to understand the, the scriptures. He's about to leave them, but, but he says, let me explain this to you one more time. Let me explain to you. Let me help you what understand. How to understand all this. And then, isn't that what we do too? We, 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 we have uh, small groups, we have uh, uh, Bible studies because there's something powerful that happens when, when we open God's word, whether collectively or individually, that God speaks, God works, and the Holy Spirit is doing what he does in transforming us and changing us into the likeness of Jesus. Those words of God in the scriptures are alive today just like they were when they came out of the mouth of Jesus and the prophets. And then he goes on to tell them this in verse uh, 46. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead. And on the third day, on the third day, sorry, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. So in other words, he says, hey, in case you missed all the hints and clues that were in the scriptures already, I'm the guy. I'm the Messiah. I am God, and I am God in flesh, and I am telling you this, that I am the one, and I'm showing you who I am. I've been showing you who I am and really who God is all the while that I've been with you. And he goes on to say this in verse 48. You are witnesses of these things. And I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you've been clothed with power on high. So now that I've told you who I am, I'm going to tell you who you are. You're my witnesses. You are a witness of these things. And I'm going, to go and ask, I'm going to ask you to go and share your testimony, share your story of how God has worked in your life. And I'm not going to let you go alone. I'm going to send you his Holy Spirit. So the final thing that Jesus does before he ascends into heaven is, is basically he opens the scriptures to them or points them back to the scriptures, and he says two things. He explained who he was, right? And he explained to them who they were in light of that. And um, it seems real easy, doesn't it? And yet how complicated you and I have made it. <laughs> so much so that we try to look in all other places, first, before the Scriptures, right? And we struggle a lot with identity theft in our world, right? With our personal information. And yet it's the enemy, Satan, 
who is so good at trying to steal our identity, right? Causing us to see our identity by what we do for a living, whether we're a teacher, a doctor, a a construction worker, a farmer, whatever. I mean, even in our world today, in our in our uh, relationships, when we meet someone new for the first time, we say, so "What?" Usually, uh, well, after uh, your name and things like that, it's uh, well, so. What do you do? <laughs> right? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But if it takes us off our true identity, then our identity is being stolen. Because when those things take the place of God in our lives, we're in a big problem. Because some of those identities can change who we really are. And our identities I mean, those kinds of identities change a lot of times, too, because you may not always be a teacher. You may not always be a dentist. I don't know. You may not always be a computer programmer. I mean, goodness gracious, everybody thought Tom, Tom Brady was going to be a New England Patriot forever, right? He's not. Now he's a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. I could even say, I know there were people in my previous congregation that thought I was, was going to retire in that place. Ha ha, I didn't. See, the true place to find your identity is only found in God. The true place to find your identity is found only in God. You can't discover who you are by looking only within yourself. You just can't. Because, because uh, you know, you, you, can, you can have it all, right? You can have uh, a, the spouse, you can have the car, you can have the boat, you can have the nice house, you can have the great career, but yet still have this empty feeling within yourself, right? It's because you get thing, we got things reversed. You can't discover who you are with looking into yourself. I mean, uh, just imagine if I would have if I would have put something into your hands that I uh, invented and you didn't recognize it uh, at all before. Um, there's no way you're going to know how it works, right? <laughs> Unless you ask some questions and you ask either the creator, me, or if I gave you an owner's manual, right, which was written by me. And that's where that verse from our theme verse comes in today, from Job chapter 12. It is God who directs the lives of his creatures. Everyone's life is in his power. God's created you. He's the only I being, he's the only being that has the right to stamp his identity on you. And it's not you, it's not the kids. It's not the kids at school that you hang out with. It's not your spouse, your mom or dad. It's God himself. God himself is the only right to stamp his identity on you. So he wants us to walk in that identity. And not only did he create you, make you, but he went a step further just to show you how valuable you are. Right? He paid the price to redeem you from sin and death and Satan by sending his one and only son, Jesus. So a lot of people, you know, they start with uh, what they want to do in life. But I think today God would say that it's better to start with uh, who do you want to become? And since God has made you in Jesus Christ to be like Jesus. Let's start there. Figure out who you want to become as a child of God. Because you step into your identity as a child of God only through faith. 
And I want to be very clear about something. You know, while habits are something that you do, faith is not something that you can do. Faith is something that is a gift that God has given to you at your baptism. As his powerful word of promise was joined to that water poured over you and the Holy Spirit fills you with faith and you respond as a child of God to that faith. Because if you're, if you're only looking to Jesus as a model or a teacher, you're, messing, you're, 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 you're missing out on the other part that you need because you need Jesus as your Lord and Savior too. Another both and. If you're trying to do it all on your own, you're going to be crushed and you won't live up to it. So God not only gives us Jesus as an example, but he also gives him to us as our Lord and Savior. The one who is there when we miss up, not if, when we mess up, when we fail, when we don't live up to the calling that God has given us. That's why Romans 10 says this. It says that, uh, so faith comes from hearing the message, and the message that is heard is the word of Christ. So if we want to be greater followers of Jesus Christ, um, that's our who, and that's who we want to be, then we need to put the habits into our lives that place us and point us closer to being like him. And our faith shapes the habits that we put in our lives. So what we discover when we study Scripture is that God made me. And since he made me, he gets naming rights over me. So stick with me here. I'm going to go through this fairly rapidly, but I think, it's, I think we need to do it that way so we can get the full impact of how cool, awesome, spectacular this is about our God who made us and gets naming rights over us. I mean, in John 1, 3, here we go. Hold on. Strap yourself in, okay? Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. So not only did God make you and me, but he loves you and me. And and, and how do we know this? Well, let's look at John 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see what we're doing here? We're going to the Scriptures to remind ourselves who God is and what he says about us reveals who we are in light of the fact that we are his. He thinks that you're so valuable and precious that he would give his one and only son to die in your place. This God really loves you. This God really values you. And he did all that so that you could belong to his family forever. And then 1 John 1, 1 John 3 yeah, First John 3 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that's what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Through that sacrifice of God's Son, Jesus, you are now one of his children. And you're not just a child, but you're chosen by him to go into the world to make a difference. He chooses you. First Peter reminds us of that. It says, but you're a chosen people, a royal priest and a holy nation, God's special possession. Think about that. You're a special possession in God that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You're a special possession. He calls you that. And you get to declare him, who he is. And now you get to work with him right here, right now. 1 Corinthians 3 tells us that. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. So as you and I work, we get to live a life of purpose. And, And we can live without fear because nothing can separate us from God. Romans 8 reminds us, and for many of you, perhaps this is one of your go-to passages. Keep it that way. Know in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, 
our Lord. Are you serious? Nothing? Yes, nothing can separate you and me from the love of God in Jesus. You're this super conqueror. Forget winning and losing in this world. You're a super conqueror in Jesus. Nothing can separate you. And so as you go out and live as a super conqueror, you you live with these gifts of God from uh, Galatians 5. The fruit of the Spirit is love that God gives, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against such things there is no law. This is amazing. (laughs) God keeps dumping the truck on me with his gifts all day, all the time. It never runs out. This incredible life that God has for you and me. Why would anybody choose to live any other way? Huh? And it even gets better. This one last passage. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance, catch this, into an inheritance that can't, can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. You and me have an inheritance that will never perish, spoil, or fade. It's not like leftovers that you forgot about in the refrigerator two weeks ago. Don't eat that, by the way. It's not like that. It never spoils. It never perishes. It never fades away. Ever. Ever. Because this is the life that you and I have in God. Because of who he is, he has put his stamp on you as creator and redeemed you in the blood of Jesus and given you all of his gifts. So that now as he has gifted you, you do all that you do to honor him. That's that God-centered action that we keep talking about. Because God's the only one that can fill you to completeness and spill over into all of your relationships. How good life is in God. Knowing that when I screw up, not if, but when, I'm forgiven and loved. I still have my inheritance. I still have my gifts that God has given me. My God still holds me close in his arms always. He doesn't kick me to the curb. He holds me close. Encourages and strengthens me. Because I, in God, am a super conqueror. And so are you. Your identity is in that conqueror, Jesus. So as you go through this week, continue through the challenge. Start with the scriptures and reminding yourself about who God is and who you are in Jesus. You super conqueror, you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have given us your word. Your words in human language that reveal to us who you are. What you have done for us in Jesus. How you have made us your own and part of your family. How you Love us with an unconditional, everlasting love, how you provide for us, how you've created us uniquely and wonderfully 
and call us to use all of your gifts to demonstrate that love back to you as well as to those around us. Lord, point us to your word to remind us of who we are as we live out that identity in Jesus as your children. Today, Lord, we are asking that you would fill us with your presence, remind us of our identity in you, as well as to work in and through us to be encouragers and the bearers of the good news of Jesus to others. Today, Lord, we pray for the victims and families of those that were affected by the shooting in Superior, Nebraska. Bring them your comfort, your peace, and your love. We ask, too, that your comfort and peace would surround uh, Karen's family as they mourn her passing. Karen's uh, mother of Michelle Mueller. We pray that you would give them the resurrection comfort that comes from the identity of being found, connected, and redeemed in Jesus. Lord, there are those who are proclaimers of your word in Haiti that are being held hostage right now of various ages, men, women, and children. Lord, we pray that you would protect them and according to your will, free them. We also uh, pray for uh, their captors, that you, by the power of your spirit, would, would uh, crack their hearts of stone, enter in, and uh, give them a new heart of flesh in you. There were victims of uh, crashes this week in our state on I-80 and in various highways and in our streets. Lord, bring your promises of uh, healing and comfort uh, to those families and and, and victims as well. Lord, there are those among us who are battling cancer today. We especially pray for Bob and Kenny. We pray also for a nephew that is battling some uh, mental illness. And we ask that uh, you would uh, heal and surround them with the best care possible, that you'd work through their physicians and all the part of their medical care to be your instruments of, of healing and uh, peace and strength. And Lord, we want to celebrate with uh, uh, Phoebe and her family as she was uh, brought into your family through the waters of holy baptism last Sunday. We thank you for the gift of faith, being a part of a family that truly is forever and marked as your very own in Jesus. Continue to work in and through her as one who shines a light of the love of Jesus always. Lord, you give us all kinds of opportunities in this world to reflect the love of Jesus. I want to thank you on behalf of uh, one of your children for the opportunity to work around um, some uh, people of a different culture for the past three weeks, to learn some words in a different language and uh, gain a friend. Lord, uh, we praise you for that opportunity and can't wait to hear and see what you do in that relationship going forward. So, Lord, uh, we also want to uh, thank and praise you for uniting uh, Gary and Annette in holy marriage yesterday right here in this place. Continue to direct them to your gifts of love and forgiveness and hold them close to your heart as they grow in their love for one another as well as their love for you. This we pray, and anything else you would have us ask in the strong and precious name of Jesus as he's taught us to pray together, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Speak with me our theme verse for today. It is God who directs the lives of his creatures. Everyone's life is in his power. 
At this time, we're going to uh, pass the offering basket around. It's a, what we call a, a time of generosity in responding to the generosity that God has shown us in our lives, the many gifts and blessings that he's given us, and especially the gift of Jesus. Now, we know there's so many other ways that you can uh, express your generosity as well here at The Rock. Now, one of those blessings that is much needed is the gift of financial generosity. And so there's many ways and, and tools in which you can do that in addition to placing a gift in the basket today. So we want to encourage you to make use of those gifts and thank you for your generosity um, in advance. Let's uh, stand and sing our closing song. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so two things. Remember the care packages that are out there for those that are college students. And number two, God knew that it was going to rain today, so we wanted to give you an opportunity to dance in the rain because your feet are on the rock. See ya. When I feel my hope about to break, I will to your unchanging grace. The water's come and the earth gives 